So today, we are going to be going over an example problem for RL parallel circuits. I've already made an explanation for RL parallel circuits. I've made some videos for RC parallel circuits, and I made a whole series of videos for RLC uh, series circuits. You can link to those in the upper right-hand corner, but in today's video, it's an example for RL parallel circuits. Please don't forget, before we go on, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can like, you can share, you can comment, subscribe, and click the notifications bell. Get all my excellent content here from my channel. So here we have an RL parallel circuit. We have a alternating voltage source. We have an R for a resistor. We have an L for an inductor. The voltage is 230 volts. The frequency is 55 hertz. The resistance of the resistor is 150 ohms. And the inductance of the inductor is 750 millihenries. And in this video, we're going to answer all of these questions and a little more inductive reactions, the current through each branch. We're going to draw the current phasor diagram, the total, total current, and the phase angle. We're going to get the impedance of the circuit, and we're going to draw the admittance triangle, get the admittance, and determine the phase angle that way also. And maybe we'll do a little more than just that, but those are the main points that we're going to cover. So let's get started, and we're just going to here calculate the inductive reactance of our inductor, which is a 750 millihenry coil there. And this is the equation that we're going to use, the inductive reactance. X is for the inductive reactance, or for the reactance. L inductance, inductor, 2 times pi times frequency times the inductance of the inductor, and that's 2 times pi times 55 hertz from here, and 750 millihenries, this is milli, that's 10 to the minus 30, you must convert that from millihenries into henries, which is 750 times 10 to the minus 3, and you get that the inductance, or the inductive reactance of that coil is 259 ohms. Okay, now we have the resistance of the resistor, which was given, and the inductance of the inductor, which we just calculated, and now we can calculate the current through each of those branches. Remember, this is a parallel circuit, so we know we have a 230-volt source, so we're going to use our equation from Ohm's law for each of these, it's just the voltage divided by the resistance or the inductive capacitance or the inductive reactance, excuse me. Remember, the voltage is the same across each branch, and it's the same as the source. That's what it is for our parallel circuits, where we have different currents, but uh, equal voltages, which is different than series, where we have uh, equal currents and different voltages. So we're going to have a different current for each branch, but in both cases, the voltage is 230 volts divided by the resistance is 150. Here, the resistance is 259, and we get a current through our resistor of 1.53 amps and 0 0.89 amperes for the current through our inductive branch. Okay, now don't forget, I didn't say here whether this is the max voltage or the RMS voltage. Please remember that these voltages and the currents are changing over time because we have an alternating current and that uh, if you're using the max voltage, then you're going to have the max currents. If you're using the RMS voltage, then you're going to have the RMS currents here with that calculated the same way, basically. Okay, and now we're going to draw the current phasor diagram and to total and, to total and, to and calculate the total current and the phase angle. So the, phased, the phasor diagram, we're going to draw the voltage as our reference along the x-axis like that. That's the phasor, the vector that represents the voltage. And we have to draw a, a, a vector for the current. Remember, the current and the voltage, for the current through the resistor and the voltage are in phase. So we draw the vector for the current in phase with the voltage. And remember, we have Ellie, the Iceman. This is the Ellie part where we have that the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees. Okay, or the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So we draw that typically on the minus x, excuse me, the minus y axis. Now I tried to draw them a little bit to scale, but now we can calculate the total current by adding these two vectors up. We have to add this up vectorally, not just arithmetically. And we're going to add these up by head to tail, the two vectors. We can move the vector for the inductor over like that. And then we have a right triangle, as you can see. And the hypotenuse of that rectangle represents the total current. OK, and there we have the phase angle. So we're going to calculate the current and the phase angle, the angle, the angle. That's the way you say phase and angle together. The fangle by which 
the voltage leads to current or the current lags the voltage. Okay, so we are going to do, uh, we're going to use uh, Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared to calculate the length of the hypotenuse. That means that the total current is going to be equal to the square root of the current through the resistor squared times the current through the capacitor squared. I'm not quite sure why I have parentheses or brackets on that one, but uh, it's just square, take the square of both and then take the square root of the sum of those two. And you would get that the current is going to be equal to a 177 or 1.77 amperes. Okay, again, that would be the max current, whether it's max or RMS. And um, yeah, that's the current. That is the hypotenuse of that triangle, the length of that uh, hypotenuse. Okay, now we can get the phase angle. Now we know all the length of all three sides, so we could use either sine, cosine, or the tangent. Typically, tangent is used because you kind of have this current and this current before you get this current. And therefore, we can use the tangent of the angle is going to be equal to the opposite tangent, toko to opposite over adjacent. That's the opposite for this angle. That's the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. The inductive current and the resistive current like that divide plug the values in, and you get that that angle is just about 30 degrees. Okay, so there's the current and the phase angle and the current phasor diagram, and now we're going to work on uh, the impedance. Okay, now this is the equation that we're going to do this two different ways. This is the equation that we're going to get for our impedance. It's 1 over, for parallel circuits, it's 1 over the square root of 1 over r squared, the resistance squared, plus 1 over... Uh, the inductive reactance squared, and if you plug those values in, 1 over 1 over 150 squared plus 1 over 259 squared, you will get that the total impedance for that circuit is 130 ohms. Now, we already got the current, but let's just get the current one more time here and see if we get the same answer using Ohm's law V equals I times R, or for alternating currents, we have V equals I times Z, Z being the total impedance. And we're going to solve for the impedance. The voltage is 230. The current we got previously, um, the total current is 1.77. 1, 1 of course, this should be a Z right here. And you get that Z is, again, the impedance is going to be 130 ohms. So I apologize, a little cut and paste problem here, but this should be impedance, impedance, impedance. Voltage, voltage, answer, and current, current, and then the answer. And you can see we get the same answer twice, and therefore we're pretty confident that values that we calculated previously um, are correct. Okay, now that's the impedance. I think we're gonna, now we're going to go on and get the admittance and the admittance triangle and calculate the phase angle again. Hopefully we'll get 30 degrees because you should get the same uh, answer for the phase angle. Remember when we have parallel circuits, we have impedance, resistance, and inductive reactance. Here, uh, for, excuse me, we have series circuits. We have impedance, resistance, and inductive reactance. When we have parallel circuits, we have admittance, because that's how much uh, current, the how much current the circuit admits to flow through it. And we don't talk about resistance for parallel circuits. We usually talk about the conductance, which is a symbol G, because that's how much current that would be conducted through that branch, the resistor, and instead of saying inductive reactance for parallel circuits, when we're talking about admittance, we say inductive susceptance, because you can think of that as being how susceptible that branch or the circuit is to changes in the current, okay? So let's uh, calculate that, and it's pretty easy because the conductance is just one over R, and the inductive susceptance is 1 over the inductive reactance, which is 1 over 150, which is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 3 Siemens. S stands for Siemens. And 1 over 259 is going to be 3,86 or 3.86 times 10 to the minus 3 Siemens. Remember, S stands for Siemens. Okay, so now we have the conductance and the inductive susceptance, and we can use those two values just like we did with our phasor diagram to calculate the admittance triangle. Once again, we would draw the voltage on the positive x. That is going to be in phase with the conductance, so to speak, and because that's the current through, that's the reactive branch, we draw that one like that, parallel to that, with no phase angle, and 90 degrees for the inductive susceptance. 
And once again, we can add those up vectorially, and the hypotenuse of that right triangle is going to be the admittance. That will represent the admittance, and we can just use, once again, the phase angle, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is why the admittance is equal to the square root of g squared, the conductance, plus the inductive susceptance squared, and then you get that that's one of the square root of those two values squared, which we got on the previous slide, and you get that, the square root of that, and you get that the admittance of that circuit would be 7.71 times 10 to the minus 3. All right, so that's the admittance in Siemens. Now, we can also get the phase angle, and we should get the same value for the phase angle, but let's just check it. It's good to check it. It's 1 over the opposite side divided by the adjacent side because tangent soka toa again, and we just divide those and get that the angle is 30 degrees. Okay, so once again, we're somewhat confident that we calculated the previous values correctly because we got 30 degrees both times. Now, here's a little extra bonus here. We're going to determine the current using the admits. Remember, we have V equals I times R, and that is V equals I times Z for uh, alternating current. And I think I got the uh, variables right here. We're going to solve for I because we want to solve the current. So total current is the voltage, and it's the voltage of the source divided by the impedance. And because we know that also the admittance is just 1 over Z, okay, the reciprocal 1 over the uh, uh, reciprocal of, of the impedance, you can see here we have this is Vs divided by Z, which is basically V times 1 over Z. So we can substitute the admittance in here for 1 over Z, and we get the total current is equal to the voltage of the source times the admittance. And we can plug those values in, and you see, once again, we get the current is 1.77 amperes. That's what we calculated previously with our current phase or diagram. Same answer, confidence that we have the correct answer. And that's the admittance triangle. You could draw the admittance triangle just like that. Okay, and you can see we have the conductance, the inductive susceptance, and that's our... Um, admittance there like that. One last thing you can always do is you can calculate the admittance. This was the admittance that we calculated on the previous slide. The admittance is 1 over the impedance. Well, the impedance was 130, so you can calculate 1 over 130, and you'll get this value also. Okay, so it should all fit together very nicely, like a nice little puzzle just like that. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, Please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice comment. I always want to know what people think of the videos, please. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Check out the next video when we put it all together. And we'll do an example problem for not just RC, not just RL, but RLC parallel circuits. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.